Welcome to our webinar, Efficient Production of Cylindrical Gears up to 700 mm diameter with Emma Grichardon. My name is Heiko Meyer and I am happy that so many of you attending this webinar today. The interest of this topic shows us that we have the right choice and that the machining of large gears obviously concerns many people. With me in the studio, Steffen Honisch and Martin Ruder. Hello. Um, Steffen Honisch is team leader at EMAG Maschinenfabrik for gear cutting machines. He is with EMAG since 12 years. He, before he was in several other positions. And the second expert is Martin Ruder. Martin Ruder is three years with us at EMAG. Before Martin Ruder was working for different other first class gear cutting machine companies, he can take a look back to 30 years of experience in the gear cutting business. Stefan Honisch and Martin Ruder will give us today an insight into the world of gear cutting with the EMA group focused on the Ricardon machines. I wish you interesting uh, interesting session and please Steffen start with your presentation. Thank you Heiko. Also welcome from my side. Welcome to the webinar Emma Grihardon. We prepared a presentation and when you have questions please let us know this. So we start. The content of this webinar is basis for high performance gear cutting. Control concept, machine equipment, differences between EMA Grichardon and EMA Köpfer, workpiece spectrum, technical details, EMA Grichardon competence center, and contacts. The EMA Grichardon series R345, these are three machines, the R300, 400, and 500 machine. So we start with a video. You will see here uh, the Richardon with an automatic loading system, the Dumobile loader, and outside a conveyor belt with workpiece pellets. This conveyor belt brings the raw parts to the Dumobile loader. The grip of the Dumobile loader brings the parts in the working area, and so then can start the hopping process. We see here also a rough deburring unit. So after the, the hopping process, the finished part, the gripper bring the finished part to the third station, to the additional deburring station with a straight grinder for deburring and is also a brush. So after deburring and brushing, the Dumobil gripper bring the part outside of the machine back to the conveyor belt. Here we see a washing machine for wash the parts and also is a, a measuring station is also possible or a other machine for, for finish the parts. Basis for high performance gear cutting. Heavily strong ripped cast iron machine components. Hardened and ground three sliding guideways. Top head with a zero backflash friction gear with a drive power up to 52 kilowatt and 5,600 Nm. Walk table as a direct drive through motor up to 635 Nm torque. High damping properties and thermostable. The oil tank is in the machine base. Higher stiffness and stability for the basis for the high performance gear cutting process. So we told us the, the, the question, what is our, our focus, stability versus rapid, fees, rapid feed. So our focus is stability for high performance gear cutting process. The first part conforms directly the drawing tolerances, increased accuracy as the slides are mounted on the guides. High performance data has round up the package for, for high performance gear cutting. Table load up to 1.6 tons, including the clamping device. 
and position roller bearings on the workpiece table. Um, Stefan, there is it's coming uh, one question directly regarding um, the column or especially heavy problems with moving the column. Are the guides protected against chips? We saw it on the picture. There is it's, it's nothing there. Can you give a short explanation to this topic? We have scrapper on the V-guides. So they, they bring the, the, the columns back for, uh, forward from the, from the V-slide and with the, the cutting oil we flush all the columns the back, chips, the chips, the, the chips sorry, the chips from the, from the, from the guides. So I think there is one more advantage. We, we, we have, we, it's not necessary to protect yeah. the, the guides and as well we have not metal sheets which are wearing out to do the yeah. chips and so on. So that's, I think it's a yeah. really good solution, a good advantage of such yes. solution. But of course okay. the uh, scrappers have to maintain several times so uh, to, to be sure that this uh, work well. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And there, if we are directly in the in the question round, we will ask also. It's coming up. We saw we have these um, V slide guides, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and there come the question is why we don't use linear guides. The the V guides is they are make the machine unnecessarily or more expensive as a normal linear guide solution. Mm. Um, Martin, yeah, perhaps you can give us some. Yeah, this is, that's for sure. The, these kind of guides are more expensive as, as uh, roller guides or something like that. But as we have seen the, 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 the performance data before, uh, we need a really rigid, uh, stable machine to achieve or to machine with this uh, cutting data. And uh, in the beginning, we did trials with this uh, linear uh, roller guide ways, and but we got uh, vibrations in the process, and uh, this was not. Um, uh, good enough for us, so uh, our goal is uh, to get a, a good part uh, after the first or the first setup, and therefore we need or we decide to, uh, to to build a machine with such kind of of, yeah. of guides. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we we are confident that with this system it is possible to have the first gear in yes. quality already yes. because it's or, such stable solution and it works yeah. okay. Thank you very much, Welcome. Stefan, please. Now the control concept, intelligent and safe. We can do four different gears with different technologies on one workpiece. We have a graphic support of all the data here from the workpiece and also from the hub. It's very easy to bring the, the, the workpiece data of the gear mm -hmm. from the drawing to the control concept. Now you have all data in front of you, the hop drawing yes. and the, the workpiece drawing, you have to put only this data into the MMI. We're telling that OD 700 millimeter is possible and it's coming up with a question, which team class we can achieve with a, a on a 700 millimeter gear? This we would say it's, uh, we can achieve a quality eight. In this case, uh, keep in mind we have a table with a 520 millimeter outside diameter. So we have an over distance of a radial one, a little bit or about 100 millimeter. So you need a uh, special support for that. And uh, in this case, the model eight part in this with this diameter is um, yeah eight. We will say and a smaller module. Sometimes they have a big parts with a small module. We will seven for, uh, say quality seven for finish mm. hopping. Yes. Yeah, but, but in the lead seven, seven is possible. Yeah. Of sure, then in the profile we have yeah. to look yeah, about what, what the yes. pending from the tools. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, so yes. I hope that's answered the question. Yeah. Also here, the, you see here the the, the mm -hmm. values or the inputs uh, for the shifting data. We have uh, several uh, kinds of shifting. You can uh, say uh, I will make uh, 50 parts per hop, and uh, shifting amount will calculate it by the control. Or you say I we have uh, 0.5 millimeter shifting steps. So the machine calculates how many parts we can do in accordance to the hop length. Also, we can uh, make an offset between um, first and second cut. If you choose this, uh, mm -hmm. you can say a, a, a one pitch or a double pitch, it doesn't matter. So we are very flexible and uh, you have only put in the data you mean and the machine calculates all by itself. What is the maximum um, uh, speed in the tool spindle? We have on the, on the standard hop head, we have 
850 up to 1500. And on the high performance hop head, we can do 440 up to 730. Mm. RPMs. I assume that's a variable um, a motor, so we can stepless yes, select that's right, that's the, right. the right RPMs. Yes. Yeah. yes that's and, right. and and what is it? It is a, a direct driven head, or it's a gear driven milling head. This is gearbox. Okay, so yes, that's uh, that's right. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You see also the, the the screen for the the cutting data. The only one what you need or the, what you have to know is uh, which cutting speed I can machine or use uh, to in accordance to the adequate hop. And also the coding and uh, also the feed rate you have to know, is this a pre-hopping or is this a finish hopping process? So but also you put, put in only the figures and the machine calculate all by itself. Here we see the uh, correction screen, we can here correction the, the two Swiss or the two ball dimension. Here we see the production data with the, the part counter, with the process time, with the cycle time. And also we have a, a graphic solution for the different options in the machine. Here we see the tail stock to the clamping sequences is possible, different clamping sequences. We see, see here that the talk of the, the tail stock. Stefan, there is also, I think, a question which uh, matches also to this, to this slide. Please explain the setup of the machine, times, employees, resources. If I see the dialogue software, I think from the software side, it's really easy to do. Yes, that's right. The question is now also for the, for the hardware to, to, to hmm. change it feature. And can you give us there some more detailed explanations? Yeah, see, it's, it's very easy to, to the, the convoy concept is very easy when you make one part. So you can save all the data in the job program when one month or later the part come back. You load only the job of this new of this part, and then all data are direct in in the in the masks. So for the for the hardware change uh, for the hardware setup, we need only one employee. So when we, we set up in, in one family with the, the clamping system, with, with quick change, we need approximately 15 minutes to change. So, okay. but when we have automation or when we change from a gear type to a shaft type and we need a change to the complete hop and so on, then we need in the first case approximately 45 minutes. Yes. Okay. But it looks like it's really flexible, so yes, but really... Right. Uh, depending on the clamping fixtures or the, the systems the customer use. Yeah. If you have all um, with screws, this needs much more. So yeah. quick change, very easy. Yeah. So okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, so we have a uh, different kind of uh, loading uh, possibilities in this machine. The easy one is a manual loading. We have an L-type uh, door for the on operation side. Um, this can be open automatically or uh, manual. Also, uh, the tailstock uh, can be um, open manually or uh, automatically. Here we have a, a ring loader system. We call it Mobile loader because our gripper heads can move separately. We can make a complete 180 degree uh, swiveling or only uh, 70, as you can see here on this, on this uh, picture. The rough part is waiting here in front of the uh, working area. So the very short uh, workpiece ch uh, change time in this case. This, uh, the gripper heads are designed for uh, yeah, bevel gears, other straight bevel gears, uh, um, shafts or standard cylindrical gears, doesn't matter. Martin, there it's, it's now we are on the automatic loading already, but um, there is a question for hand loading. The parts are very heavy mm -hmm. and in this size, 700 millimeter diameter. It is possible to access the, the work area with the grain. Yeah, please go back one. Okay. <clears throat> you can see here L shape uh, operating door. As I mentioned before, you can open it automatically or uh, uh, manual. Also, the, uh, the tailstock can open. Uh, this is a manual system. You can see here, this is a hydraulic uh, clamping device. This is automatically. So um, if the job is done, the door, door goes open automatically. The tailstock goes up and open automatically. So it can come 
from the over the top uh, to, to with a crane and then pick up or change the part, no problem. Oh. Um, how are the hops clamped? Do you offer a quick change or which interfaces you using? Mm -hmm. Stephen? The interface of the hop arbor are SK50 or HSK B125. So, the worker prepared a complete uh, hop arbor with the hop, with the B-ring, with the hydraulic nuts uh, outside of the machine. Then you can change the complete prepared hop head, uh, hop arbor in the machine. So you need f up four, four to five minutes to change this in the machine complete. Okay, thank you very much, Stefan. Here we see nearly the same machine from the video. We have a, a conveyor belt with, with workpiece pellets. Here we can do a O type or L type to do mobile loader, bring the parts from the conveyor belt in the machine, in the working area on the workpiece table, and then bring it back to the conveyor belt. Also possible is uh, automatic loading with a uh, gantry. Here we can bring it to an, an, an change table or direct in the dual mobile grippers or you can also go over the roof direct in the in the workpiece table. Here we see a robot loading cell. We have one loading and one unloading convoyer and one robot. The robot bring the parts from the convoyer belt in the machine here direct in the workpiece table. Or also possible is to bring the parts to the mobile gripper. It's, I think it's not easy to, to, to answer 100%, but I think we can give a, a short um, yeah, indication what's going on. How much hop run out arrow will be achieved? How is it controlled? For the hop run out, you can check with, a, with an indicator. Yeah. Also, you have a, yeah, a special tool so where you can make the setup for the hop arbor you put all together and this is a driven if you want we have two solutions a manual uh, or a, a driven solution and uh, you can start uh, the uh, with a small rpm and then you can inject the run out uh, of the hop and put it complete into the machine but in the machine is the same you can put in in the machine and then and, and put on an, an indicator as well so yeah. yeah yeah but here i think that's perhaps i don't know the the question is 100% clear. It, it looks like for me also that it's the run out error as well of the of the gear on the machine. Have we there any chance to to check this during the during the cutting or during the time where we set up the part? Yeah, before uh, if you set up the machine, we have to check also with an indicator the run out of the clamping fixture. If you have an, uh, a quick change uh, yes. solution, uh, the base must be okay. So this is important, and when you change uh, the, the, the upper parts, and uh, we guarantee uh, yeah, um, five microns uh, repeating, uh, repeating, uh, repeating quality. Yeah. Okay, no, thank you. So I hope we have answered this question accordingly. If not, please ask directly later by mail. So here we see also a robot loading, but here we have no conveyor belts, so we have a stacker cell. You see it, the stacker cell. So the robot bring the parts from the from the stacker uh, from the stacker in the machine here direct in the on the workpiece table and the finished part back in the in the stacker cell. Further equipment of the machine is in this case here is a deburring equipment. We have in the in the main spindle in the working area. You can see here is a, a turbo straight grinder, for example, here to deburr a, a warm wheel. We can using also a deburring disc or a deburring insert in the working area. What about the deburring possibility, possibilities on EMAC? What offering here? We hear roll chamfering, deburring, brushing. Yeah, um, this is, uh, you can see it here on, on this slide. We can see it with also these turbo straight grinders. We have here um, a roller uh, deburring. And you know, we have two kinds of brushes. This is uh, located on the third station in the machine. This is uh, but only possible with automatic loading machine with a ring loader. This uh, the third station is behind uh, uh, the operating side of the machine. And this is in parallel to the uh, to the main 
to, to the hopping process in, in the machine. Yeah. Sorry that I add again yeah. something, but that's a, that's a really good point because if you're operating parallel with the machining, like I know in the, in the market, in this diameter where we are in 500, 600 with this machine, that's are not uh, where you have not this solution. So I think there we, that's a unique solution that you have really main time parallel chamfering, brushing and deburring possibilities. Mm. It is, is this right? My experience, uh, my that's, experience I think so. Yes, that's yes, a big, yes. big advantage. Yes. And this we have to be in mind that mm. with automatic loading machines, we can do mean time parallel mm. Deburring. Yes. Yeah. Also, setup Very good. For, also, the setup for this equipment is also easy because this is a NC axis. Yeah. This is also stored with the with the workpiece job we have in the in the machine. So okay. Further, we have an, an initial uh, hop head. In this case, for an uh, it's a for milling uh, disc type cutters for for warm uh, for warm shafts cutting. This is a, yeah, it's a hydraulic clamp hop head, very easy to change. The driven is by the SK50 or by the HSKB125. We have the same uh, RPMs as in the normal hop head. And uh, the maximum outside, outside diameter for such kind of tool is a 220 millimeter. And the tool, tool width is a uh, pending of the module. And uh, we say here for the small, we have a module eight. And for the bigger one, we have module 16. Yes. 16. Yeah. We can yeah. machine. Yeah. That's also, also coming a question, important questions, I think, because um, the workpiece fixturing on a gear cutting machine is really important. They have a big influence also to the reachable quality. So this, the question is are the flexible workpiece fixtures for families of parts available? If yes, um, which ones we have? Yeah. So we have on the table a zero clamping system. Here you can change the, the uh, quick change option from all the, 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 the clamping device manufacturers. The quick change is a system where you, you uh, put, a, put a, the, the control, then the table, open the clamping device. You can put the complete clamping device out of the machine and bring the, net, the, the, the other clamping device in the machine put the control and the table clamp the clamping device and now you can start the production with the new part. And and if I, I don't know if the audience know this, but EMAC have our own fixturing department where we designing and build fixtures. So I'm, we are working as well for Richard on Machine together with them using this knowledge Yes, we work also with this. So, yeah. so we can select yes. between our own fixtures and yes. fixtures which are available on the market, on the from, market. from suppliers. Yes. Okay, thank well, you. We do it in accordance with what the customer already has, mm -hmm. so in his experience, okay, so, so we are here flexible. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, as you know, or may you know, we have also um, EMAC Köpfer. This is our sister in Schwenningen. Uh, they build machines uh, for the smaller parts. The smaller part in this case means uh, from 10 to 200 millimeter outside diameter and uh, module for all bigger parts up to 700 millimeter we make in the Richardon machine and this is uh, this ma machine will produced here in Eislingen. We have EMA Köpfer, they have also these vertical machines yes. which we can integrate it in production lines where we can do then as well grinding and uh, sorry we can do turning OP10, OP20 and then make um, uh, the gear cutting uh, on a VL4H and then also can do chamfering or roll deburring applications on a separate machine. So they're for high batches, high production sizes, there also we have really interesting solutions. Yeah, for only this, yeah, I, I would like to add. For the soft, for the soft process, we can uh, pro uh, provide a complete uh, system. Line system. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you can see a different kind of uh, various parts we have: uh, shafts. Uh, bevel gears, unround gears, uh, clutch bodies, multi yeah, these multiple gears, and so on. Worms, worm wheels. So this is a, a wide spectrum of workplace we can uh, machine on our yeah on our machine. Yes. Perhaps we see here one bronze part. So the question is, what about bronze alloys? Um, uh, is there? Can we give there some example regarding the cutting values? Qualities or I don't yeah, know. Yeah, this is uh, we can give, but it's uh, not not so easy. 
But uh, this is pending of the workpiece itself. It's uh, pending of the process you're using and also on the clamping fixture you have. And uh, what, what we can say is that if you use a uh, PM steel hop with a uh, yeah, TIN coating, this is the, the, the best coating for, for bronze uh, in our experience. Yeah, let me say for module three part is uh, about 40 to 50 meter cutting speed. A feed rate of 0. Point, yeah, 0. 0.4 down to 0. 0.2, but this is pending of this number of starts of the of the hop. Yeah. So, but, so, so, uh, but in in any case, please uh, send us a drawing and we take a look on it and then we calculate the correct cycle time. How do you ensure the accuracy of the uh, DOB uh, dimension over balls measurement? Is there some solution on the machine or how we handle this? We flushing the complete bed with the oil so is the, the the growth over the temperature is very small in the machine but a uh, temperature compensation is also possible for for the correction of the a few micros every degree also yeah as the temperature increasing up so are we um, um, make a correction and send the distance automatically as pending of the x-axis and, uh, and the z-axis. Yes. So, but from the design, the machine is really have a uh, really is, high thermo yes. ther thermo stability. Yeah. stability. So yes. that's, uh, yeah. that's that's I think that's important. Yeah. That's especially important because cycle times can be also longer yes. as, uh, as uh, one minute, perhaps they are minute, ten minutes. I don't yes. know, twenty yes. minutes yes. and so right. on. And there's really important. Yeah. That the machine is really thermal, thermal stable and yeah. it's also depending of, of the environment of the machine. Yeah, so machine very close to a, low, to a door where every five minutes open, close, open, close. This is really not good. But uh, <laughs> actually, the machine uh, spend mill an hour in, in, in the work hall, and uh, yeah, the temperature should be stable the whole time. So we also have no problems. No problems. With, uh, yeah. Which type of controller we using or we build in the machine um, to synchronize the hop and the chuck? Uh, chuck means the table in this case, or yeah, the, the table. Office, yeah. table. Yeah, yeah we, we're using the the, the Siemens uh, gearbox for that. Yeah, yeah, that's a Siemens. So the, Siemens, the machine, yeah. the Siemens, control, Siemens. the machines, yeah, control, yes. the machines is available in Siemens in 840D, Siemens. I think. 840D, yeah. yes, yes, that's right. And um, all the components which are necessary um, are as well from Siemens for yes. the synchronizing, for the calculation, and. Of sure, the Siemens we know all that are the, the 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 most popular control in the gear cutting machines. Yes, so uh, we yeah. using the standard Siemens yes. gearbox. Yeah. Regarding the table drive, it is it, it is a gear driven table or it's a it's a um, direct driven table drive. Direct driven table, yeah, drive. Yes. Okay. We have so two. We had two RPMs. We have the the standard table with one hundred and twenty RPMs. And uh, high speed table with 230 RPMs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are really flexible also for, for higher, higher speeds. Higher speeds, yes. higher rotations are possible. And both, both, both solutions are able to, to, to put on 1.6 ton of a workpiece, not including the workpiece yeah. clamping. Yeah. So okay, yeah, that's, that's, this is very high. That's, for, that's for enough, yeah, I think. <laughs> Thank RPMs, you very much yeah. for this answering. So now here are the technical details of the machine. We have can maximal module with the standard hop head of 12 and uh, high performance hop head up to 25. Uh, workpiece diameter is maximum 700. Radial axis distance is 540 millimeters. Axial hop distance is one meter, so you can produce parts with four shafts with four different gears on one part. The shift distance is 350 on the standard hop head and 425 on the high performance head. The swiveling degrees are plus minus uh, 45 degrees. Here the workpiece table speed, we, we say it before, 120 or 230. Workpiece loads 1.6 tons. Tool speed, we uh, say before 850 up to 1500 or 440 up to 730. The tool drive from 14 kilowatt up to 52. Tool diameters on the standard hop 
uh, 180 and on the big cob at 300 millimeters. A two length 317 up to 450 on the big hop head. Interfaces SK50 or HSKB 125. And the machine weight for a hand loading machine is approx 19 tons. On an automation machine, approx 21 tons. So, the USP points of this machine is the innovative and self explanatory software, also the high cutting volumes to the extremely rich design, flexible processing through adaption of additional equipment, easy to change over between different technologies and one base, many possibilities. Devin, which tool control system do you offer a heavy there solution? Our control system is uh, the motor data. Uh, the electrici electricity uh, base control for the hop yes. spindle. And if you increase or overrun a, a special value, we put it in the machine. Uh, so the machine goes to a retract, emissions retract, yeah. and it brings out a hop uh, of the parts. So we are safe to, to don't have a break and breakage on the, on the hop. So you, it, that's, uh, that's important. You, we avoid and so that's, avoid it, that's so fast that it, we can avoid with this reaction uh, damaged hop. Also, yeah. uh, we, we check in permanent the, uh, the synchronizing between B and C axis also. And if you have a wear or something is wrong with the hop, uh, this uh, value is increasing as well. And uh, so we go also back with an emergency retract. Yeah. Okay, there's also a question regarding the quality how we can integrate a, a measure, measuring machines in, into the process? Uh, measuring machine is in the machine, in the process, not possible. But the point is also that the complete measuring time goes on the main time. So the, the thing is we do the measuring machines outside of the machine. So near from the machine, the worker load the measuring station or we have it on the automation and automation a portal or a robot mm -hmm. load the measuring station. Mm -hmm. But we check in this case only the measure over ball or the measure over pin. Uh, and this uh, we make an average for example over three or five parts and then yes. we can bring back automatically the, the, the value um, via interface back to the machine and the machine corrects the next part in accordance to this value what we get. The Rehardon Competence Center do also service and spare parts for the Rehardon machines. We make also maintenance and overhaul of the hop head of the, of the workpiece table. We do retrofits, mostly the control retrofits from Siemens 840C up to Siemens 840D or for new hydraulic, new pneumatic. Also possible is a uh, a turnkey solution. So in the EMAC group we have also turning machines. So mm -hmm. we can see a VSC machine or a VTC machine for turning the shaft or turning the, the gear into operations. We use an automation system, a conveyor belt or a robot or or another handshake. Or a handshake yeah, a solution matter. or a gantry and then bring it the part to the Rehardon machine and here we do the, the gear cutting process. Is there any technology to reduce the hop run on parts? That's yeah, uh, if we talk about uh, feed scallops, feed uh, feed feed scallops yeah, yeah, this is a uh, uh, spending of the, the feed rate you put in into the machine. Yeah, uh, so. yeah. But there is no special technology no, it's, it's no uh, available database uh, values behind. So, yeah. so this yeah. is uh, based on the experience of the of the workers. Of the worker. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah, it's a. Uh, but we can consider this in our time calculation. Uh, we can choose: uh, is this a pre-hopping, is finish hopping, two cut hopping, is this climbing, conventional hopping? So we can choose such kind of figures, and then in the machine, uh, the, the time calculation program says us this feed rate, this RPMs. You have to know. To okay, to and then yeah. you're getting the best result. Mm -hmm. Okay, other interesting question is, it is a wet or dry machining possible? So uh, the Richard machine is only a wet machine. So we need this oil for, for temperature uh, control and also to flush the, the chips out of the machine. And in this, this module area for the Richard machine, the, the, the big module, the big parts, and also the, the small, small batches. Yeah, also yes. small, yeah, yeah. 
uh, we need the, the wet hopping. Yeah. Yeah. So Martin, so yeah, do you have to add something to this yeah, comment? Because dry hopping is uh, not that easy a process as, it, uh, as you can read. Uh, you need uh, a long time to, to, to find the right feed rates, the, hard, the, the cutting speed, the shifting data. And uh, this is possible if you have uh, 24 hours, 7 days, same part. This is very easy and this is common, this is a standard. And But uh, our yeah, target customers, 95% uh, of the we have one part cutting mid-size, small-size uh, batches, and this uh, they have no time and it makes no sense to 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 yeah, put there in is a dry and, and dry uh, process there is, for that. There is more important to bring um, yeah. to have a shorter idle time to set up times is more important than yeah. the cutting times which you with with carbide tools which you're using dry cutting yeah. are perhaps faster but they are much more expensive yes. and the advantages are not so big. Yeah. And also, yes. especially, I think as well, in the area where we are from module and from diameter, um, the technology is wet cutting. So offshore yeah. in the smaller yeah. ones, automotive industry, or also for our crypto solutions, yeah. there is dry cutting really a good solution. And also, uh, as well offshore for really huge gears, which for example, using in gearbox of wind power units, then also dry cutting is a solution, but in our area, uh, yes, yeah. wet cutting is really yes. common and this state-of-the-art technology, I think. Yes. And then it's also matching to the process. One more question, which tool materials uh, we can use? Martin? Yeah, we have the, the common uh, material. This is a carbide, this is a MC90 or a PM steel or a high-speed uh, high steel. This is so on. We use also this what our customer already have, so we can uh, put in a uh, takeover also in our machine, so this is, doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. Also the coatings, uh, yeah, this is pending of the of the material we have to machine. So um, yeah, this is um, that's why we need a drawing and all the data of the of the parts, and when we will design which hot material and which coating we are using. How cutting speed Ema prefer for effective tool life? <laughs> Martin, I think that's a that's a not a not a black and white question. So yeah, I think a, this is what I uh, told before. If we have a high volume production, you can uh, modify your process perfectly, and that's why right, to, to find the right um, cutting yeah, data or so the cutting speed um, for the shorter or for small batches. This is uh, quite difficult. So we are. Uh, uh, we take over the recommendations of the two suppliers. So yes. we have, uh, yeah, for example, uh, it's, a, it's a PM steel module 5, I would say, it's between 100 and 130 meter. And uh, this carbide, uh, they have 160, 180 meter in module 6. Or, and uh, yeah, this is not, not really easy uh, to, 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 to recommend this is the cutting speed to get the best tool life this, yeah, is, uh, that's, uh, this is also the complete system you need a, a good uh, a clamping fixture you know and uh, is it a strong or is it so very slim you have vibration on it uh, yes. so this is uh, yeah, not easy, not easy. To, to yeah, many many parameters many influencing yeah, this yeah, answering yeah. so therefore also please send you, your part inside the emac system to your sa responsible sales or to to Martin Rudo and um, Stefan Honisch, and then we can we will um, check it out and answering. Okay, then one more quality topic. Uh, that's I think almost answering this. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, how to handle quality assurance? Um, can we add or how to add a post-process measurement? Stefan, you you yeah. gave already I some. Say before we, we can do on the on the automation or the, or the knee of the machine a post-process measuring station. Here we can uh, measuring the the two ball dimension and the, the difference. We can uh, correction in the machine via via interface. So it's yeah. hard finishing is hard finishing possible. Yes, so that's uh, yeah. yes, it is. Uh, we have an, uh, a sensor on the hop head uh, to, to to get uh, the gaps of the part, and uh, yeah, it's it's possible. And how then, but of short, it's not grinding, that's not honing, that's yeah, how then. It's only uh, that's sky, that's sky hopping. Yeah. Yeah. No. And uh, no, no, hobby, uh, no, no grinding, no uh, shaving or something okay. like that. But, and the, the quality which we reach there is. Yeah, uh, in, in, in direct, in, in the figures, we can uh, have influence via our machine. We will say, yeah, seven or 
better sometimes. Um, but the uh, profile is yeah, pending of the, the tool supplier. Yeah. We make good uh, um, tools, that's for sure. But sometimes uh, the tool have also tolerances and sometimes have a good one or a bad one. And yes. so, so that's why to, to, to make a clear announcement, we have to do an, uh, an trial. Yes. Okay, and then also one more question. How many tools we can clamp on the hop arbor, on one milling arbor? So if we have perhaps different so gears to do. We can do four different um, gears in one part. So we can clamp also four different hops. So we have a shifting di distance from 350 millimeters. So we have enough space for the amount uh, for clamped three to four, four hops on the hop hour. Mm. No more questions, I see. So thank you very much for the interest in this session of Richard on, Emma Richardon up to 700 millimeter. Thank you very much to Steffen Honisch. Thank you very much to Martin Rudo. If you have questions, to the spe specific technology, please contact Martin Ruder, Steffen Honisch. You see the details here. And of sure, asking your responsible sales managers in your areas, they will also answering all the questions. And of sure, also they are happy to get some RFQs for this technology and for all other EMAC technologies. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye bye.